Hey everyone, I just got back from a three week long, exciting, exhausting, exhilarating European tour with the Bob Reynolds Quartet. This was a really special experience for us all. It was really great to meet so many of you out there and play for you. Europe is so amazing and so beautiful. It's just got the best nature, best architecture, and some of the best food, too. The venues were packed. You guys really showed up and showed us some real major support, which truly means a lot to us. Because this is a young band. We haven't really been touring for that long. We're just now sort of building but for a band like that, now is the crucial stage. Now is when we need your support the most. And you guys have been absolutely amazing by showing up and packing out these venues and supporting us and the music. So thank you so much. So this was a pretty intense run. We were out for three weeks, and I think we played about 17 shows in 21 days. So it's really, really intense. It's a lot of traveling, it's a lot of playing, it's not a lot of sleep. That jazz life. That jazz life. She got t-shirts. I know, I could make some. And touring like this with such high density of shows, it truly is a transformative experience for a band. There's nothing quite like having to play a show night after night after night after night after night with the same people and digging deeper and deeper into the thing that makes you and these band members a unique entity. This daily experience of having to dig deeper inside yourself and having to reinvent the songs anew every night in order to not bore yourself and your band members that really does something to your brain as a musician. It trains a certain muscle in the head that can only be trained when you're performing on stage night after night after night after night. You cannot train that muscle with practicing at home, no matter what you practice or how much. It's a real journey for the artistic mind, having to play those songs every night and hitting peaks and valleys and plateaus and having to reinvent the songs and feeling like you're stuck night after night and not knowing what else to play over these songs because you've been playing them so often and then hitting that second wing and that new inspiration comes and something opens up and you feel yourself going through this whole process as an artist, getting really excited some nights because yeah, it sounds awesome and I'm so creative and I'm tapping into new material and this is great and then on some other nights getting super insecure because you can't play anything that makes sense to you and all of your ideas are boring and you get all in your head about it and then you sort of sulk and lick your wounds and you cry to your band members and, you know and they tell you man shoot you sounded really great we thought you sounded awesome and you're like what no actually I thought I sounded good three days ago and I literally saw all of us go through this I saw myself Bob Sean, Yannick, we all went through this artistic process of these ups and downs, ups and downs. So it's this whole elusive whirlwind of creative energies throwing you left and right like a storm in the ocean. And it's all part of the experience of touring, of bonding with the band members, of getting to know yourself, or getting to know your mind, and slowly but surely trying to make sense of it all. You guys deserve each other, you're filming. You can't see anybody's face. Oh, wow. it's just, just a screen. Yeah, we're here in London. Everyone's vlogging. Everyone's important. <laughs> so that's the creative aspect of it. Then there's also the lifestyle aspect of it, right? And it's this whole big lucrative lifestyle of traveling the world and playing concerts night after night and meeting fans and getting to be creative, meeting new people and trying new foods and seeing new places and all of these great things are all true. 
and we love and appreciate every moment of that experience. But all that good stuff is just one side of the coin. There is a whole other side to that coin. And you don't get to see that other side when you're 25 years old at home practicing, dreaming of what it's going to be like to tour. You only get to see that second side of the coin when you are on that tour, when you are in that van, when you haven't been getting any sleep in over two weeks, when you carry your own gear, when your suitcases get lost on flights, when you're away from your loved ones, when you haven't slept in the same bed for more than two nights in a long time. Guys, touring is no bed of roses. <laughs> touring is difficult, grueling, and exhausting. It's also amazing, wonderful, and rare. There you go. That jazz life. I cannot speak for other band members, but I can tell you for myself, like for me, at my age, after the amount of touring that I've done in my life, for me to leave home and go tour somewhere for longer than three, four days, it has to be either really good money or really good music, or both. I'm happy to say that with the Bob Reynolds Quartet, the hang is amazing, the music is awesome, and being that Bob is a great band leader, he makes sure that we actually take some money home. And I know that at these early stages of Bob's touring career, it probably takes more than he could even tell you and describe to pull it off and make it all happen, logistically, financially, organizationally, and Bob is doing a kick-ass job getting us out there and getting the music into your ears. Bob and I were just talking about it. There are all kinds of prices you pay by being away this much. It means you don't get to invest in your own projects here and build. It means you don't get to do the work in town, like studio work or session work in Los Angeles. It could potentially maybe even pay you more or it could potentially result in more work that it now won't result in because everyone thinks you're away all the time. Yes, some people never leave Los Angeles in order to not give the impression of being gone and remaining open and available to in-town work, studio work, TV work. So when you leave, for instance, you can't take the work and people think you're gone so they won't be calling you for that work even when you come back because they don't know if you're here. Yeah, there's also these kinds of considerations too. And you have to keep it all in mind when you agree to be gone for three weeks or five weeks. We all dream of touring when we're 19 or 22, and then once you start doing it, you understand that there's a price to pay. Well, there's actually several prices to pay, and you have to be okay with paying them, and you have to welcome paying them. And then, and only then, do you get to reap the benefits of touring, which is the camaraderie, which is the creativity, which is the artistic journey, the ups and downs I was talking about before, which is bonding with the fans out there, which is seeing the world, trying all kinds of foods, meeting all kinds of people. <laughs> And something like a touring career, for instance, takes years and years and years to build. So like we had this run in Europe, we had one more run last year, hopefully we'll go again next year and slowly, year after year, slowly, 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 we build, we build, we build a reputation of a touring act until eventually there's a critical mass of fans and listeners and then you're somebody and then your guarantees go up for the shows and then you make a little more money but that takes years and years and years to accomplish and it took years and years to all the famous artists and bands that you love. You build it one year at a time, you go, 
you play smaller venues. Next year you come back, hopefully maybe you do a little bigger venue or maybe the same small venue, but maybe two nights in a row. Like this year we've done two nights in Paris in the same club we played last year, but last year was only one night. This year it was two. So you see what I mean? You build slowly, slowly, and it takes years. It takes so long to really build that critical mass of fans and listeners and give yourself a name of a reputable touring act. Most of the people who came to our shows this year and last year are people who found out about us through YouTube. Are people like yourselves, people who watch Bob's vlog, people who watch Yannick's vlog. And now I have this channel and Sean has a channel too. So we are really blessed to have social media give us that extra help we need. On the other hand though, the most of history, record labels were helping artists to tour and giving tour support. There were such things as recording contracts, big management companies, big booking agencies. A label would help you make an album and give you tour support and give that initial financial investment and then recoup it at the end of the tour or not. And then put some more money until they recoup. You had that help. Now it's the other way around. Now you are your own manager. You are your own PR agent. You have YouTube, you have your camera, and hopefully maybe you have a booking agency if you're lucky. You don't have tour support. You don't have big recording contracts anymore. You're essentially on your own as an artist. So that's the downside. And of course the upside is the new social media reality and paradigm. A paradigm that enabled a band like us to go to Europe and, and pack out these venues without having big publicity and without having big record contracts and without having big management. So again, there's the good side, there's the bad side. That's about it, you guys. I have a little bit more touring coming up this year. Meanwhile, I'm gonna keep releasing lessons and tutorials like I have been. Please let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about or any topics you want me to cover. I love hearing from you down in the comments and I respond to every single one of you every time on every video. I hope everyone's having a great year so far, filled with music and creativity. Please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for checking out the video and I will see you next time. Peace. The lettuce will, if you get lettuce, it will turn too quickly and you've still got all this meat left and all this cheese left, you know, and then now you've got meat and cheese. So the first few sandwiches, first two, if you're lucky, three sandwiches are great and then you're down to just meat and cheese because you've used up the lettuce and the tomato already. Right. right. Or, you know, if you get, if you try to balance it out differently, you get less meat. It's just, I don't know, the, the lettuce always messes it up. So I end up not getting lettuce because it just wilts too soon. And then the tomato thing, if you cut through the tomatoes and you have a few slices, then you're always down to like, you have that one other half to deal with, and then you just have like the edge. It just gets, <laughs> it's difficult. It's you know, no you can get like two sandwich. great sandwiches, and yeah. the rest are just like, uh, they're sort of like.